In the previous video on the spine, we set up custom rotations, and those rotations were applied as a transform attribute. We will now want to take those transforms and convert them to be more practically applicable to a rig. So this scene is a modified version of the previous example. In this version, the tip of the spine now has children. These children would essentially be the equivalent to shoulders in most rigs. Using the pose node, we can manipulate these bones with FK. This allows us to see how the hierarchy is actually working. In this case, we would expect the children to follow the tip of the spine, and that is exactly how they are working. If we look at the end of our spine network, however, we'll see that the rotations we have created are not actually propagating through to the shoulders. There are two reasons for this. The first is that we are only creating the transform attribute, and we are not applying it to any of the children. The second is that even if we were trying to do this, it would not work with the standard attribute wrangle node. So if I know the attribute wrangle node won't be able to apply transforms, why did I use it? One reason that I used it is from habit. By default, I will always use the standard attribute wrangle node. Another reason is speed. The standard attribute wrangle node has no extra features attached to it and is very lightweight. Most importantly in this case, however, is ease of use. The rig attribute wrangle node has a lot of extra functionality added, but it also links in with the rig viewer states, which makes it harder to debug with. Now, in order to get the behavior that we require, we'll get a rig attribute wrangle node. I can then connect the first input to our rig and the second input to our controls. We can now enter values into this node. In this case, I'll enter a value which is invalid. As this value is invalid, we get an error message that pops up. This error message gives us no information of value. All of this information applies to how this node deals with the viewer state and not with the script itself. When working with this node, any syntax errors will bring up a similar message. We could also send the error messages to the console. This will of course lead to a cluttered console which will be more difficult to read. This is why I did my initial calculations in a standard attribute wrangle node. This way, instead of dealing with the debugging in the attribute wrangle node for the rig, we can get our information correct and then copy it from the original attribute wrangle node into the rig specific one. This will give us our main functionality and we can apply it to our rig now. There is one thing to note before we update the script. I've created a group joint node and I've used this to separate the points for the spine. I'll specify this as the group for the wrangle node. This way we'll restrict the transforms to the spine and will not apply them to the children. We will not make any major changes to the script. The only thing that we need to change is how we set the final transform. We'll no longer set the attribute directly. Instead, we'll use this to define a three by three rotation matrix. So this will be a matrix three, and I'll call it M3. This matrix will be used as the transform in a transformation matrix. A transformation matrix will be a four by four matrix. So we'll need to create this. The type for a four by four matrix is just matrix. I'll call this M4 so we know what we're dealing with. And we'll set this with M3. In Houdini, when you convert a 3x3 matrix to a 4x4 matrix, it will place the 3x3 matrix as the rotation values of the 4x4 matrix by default. This is, of course, the exact behavior that we want. We've now stored our rotation in the matrix. We'll need to translate this rotation into the appropriate position. To do this, we'll need to get the position of each of these points. For this, I'll create a vector variable and I'll call this pos, and we'll set this with the point attribute. The input will be zero for the first input, the attribute will be p, and we'll get it for the current point with at pt num. We can then explicitly use our transformation matrix to set the transform of the points, and this will be done using a set point transform function. This function will only work as expected in the rig attribute wrangle node. The first parameter will be the input, which will be zero, We'll then have the point number, which will be the current point we are working on, with at pt num. Next we add the transformation matrix, in this case it will be m4. The final option will be to apply the transform to the children. In this case that is exactly what we want, so we'll set this to be 1. I've got the position for our matrix, but I've forgotten to update it. To update the position, we'll use a translate function. 
The first parameter will be our matrix, which is M4, and we'll translate this by our position, which is pos. We now have a proper inheritance for the transforms, with the transforms of the spine propagating through to the children properly.